support. May I request uh, my co-host, Professor Dalavin Tarapur, to please call in our very esteemed uh, speaker of the day, the technical speaker, Mr. Peshwa Acharya, a very esteemed dignitary from a very senior management uh, force, bringing his thoughts forward to us to take us on this whole understanding, do we adapt or do we perish? Listening from a veteran, Mr. Peshwa Acharya Delavine, request you to please introduce sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Makkad. I take this honor and privilege to invite and introduce our technical speaker for the day, Mr. Peshwa Acharya. An accomplished senior management professional and business leader, Mr. Peshwa Acharya possesses over 30 years of experience in building robust brands across a wide spectrum of industries, including FMCG, retail, telecom, technology, e-commerce, hospitality, and education domains. He has been instrumental in setting up and building some of India's most prominent businesses and startups, such as Procter & Gamble, Reckitt, Dabur, Reliance Retail, Reliance Digital, Sterling Holidays, that's Thomas Cook, and Housing.com. An alumnus of IIM Calcutta and IIT Kharagpur, Mr. Acharya has worked across India, Indian subcontinent, Asia, and other emerging markets. He is driven by consumer insights and innovation and envisions to create technology-driven products, services, and platforms across sectors. Mr. Acharya was the first CEO of the IIT Bombay Research and Innovation Park, Aspire. He has also founded his own entrepreneurial ven ventures, thinkasconsumers.com and Levin Healthcare. At present, Mr. Acharya is working with Brightcom Group as president and member of the board. He is also associated with the not-for-profit organization Magic Bus and consulting global CMO. Additionally, he also serves on the board of Platinum One, a consumer technology company. Peshwa, Mr. Peshwa loves mentoring as well as learning from young professionals and is actively involved in sharing his rich knowledge and experience with aspirants at several management institutes and universities. He devotes considerable time and energy towards mentoring entrepreneurs through angel investments in various startups. He founded GrowShift with a mission to scale up his passion for mentoring and impacting as many lives as he can. It gives us great honor and pride to have you with us, Mr. Acharya, here today, and we welcome you with our warm hearts. Over to you, Mr. Acharya. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Tarapur, for those kind words and thank you, Dr. Sangeeta. And I am um, really thankful to uh, Professor Arun Pujari because, you know, I met him in, uh, you know, some of the academic institutions and apart from his prowess as a professor and uh, educationist, I think he's a wonderful gentleman and that is what really kind of wanted me to come here. Of course, I know about your institution for a long, long time in Bombay. So I'm really thankful. Um, I will not be able to give much of an academic, uh, you know, background to this whole concept, but I'll really try to give some indicators from a business point of view yeah so that's what i'll try to do and hopefully i'll be within the time limit so once again thank you dr arun pujari thank you sir for calling me and i will try to share my uh, you know last 30 years of uh, business and working experience um, both in corporate sector in india in asia pacific in africa i have worked across various emerging markets i'll try to share whatever and i'll stick to the uh, uh, topic. Just two things I wanted to say. Uh, one is that I have, of course, all of us as Indians have some understanding of Thailand because we all go on holiday there. Uh, but beyond that, one of my understanding of Thailand is that when I was in Reliance Retail, we did recruit a lot of senior professionals from Thailand. In fact, we recruited from a co company called Lotus. You know, Tesco Lotus, which is a big retail company of Thailand. And we recruited a lot of senior professionals who later on became my colleagues uh, in Reliance Retail. And during that time, I think 2009-10, we actually went to Thailand a number of times for business interaction and learning. 
because that time actually thailand was quite ahead in you know modern trade or organized retailing you know of course now india has taken on and you know we are really ahead so uh, my that is my understanding of thailand so i would also like to thank all my uh, colleagues from thailand okay so with this without much ado i will move forward uh, is that okay dr sangeeta and dr arun absolutely sir we are waiting to hear from you okay that's very keenly okay. yes sir yeah yeah sir. yeah and uh, also i say that i'll be talking on a few points which i have noted down jotted down yesterday uh, at any point of time the students or anyone kind of wants to reach out to me i am happy to do that and answer some of their queries you know especially my job is to inspire young people you know and of course see all of you senior people also can reach out to me but i am happy to do that i'll share my email address with dr arun okay so i just wanted to start with that okay so uh, the topic which has been given is adapt innovate or pay perish futuristic trends in global business yeah so i'll actually list down some of the trends which i think and uh, you know i'll share with that uh, the first uh, trend which is very important is i think today all businesses are global that's very important to know when i started exactly my working career 30 years ago i started my career 30 years ago it was not so global india was still insular in fact in 1991 is when dr manmohan singh's regime actually liberalized the country and that is the year when i started my working career after my iit and iim so essentially 30 years really things have changed we all must think global that's very important even if you are a hyper local business it is all about global so that's very important and i think to some extent thailand as a country has shown us that that how even being a mid sized country in asia you actually can be global because thailand's economy is extremely global in terms of product and services so that's the first trend which i can see second trend which i can see is that actually in the future world the way things are happening it's very difficult to forecast any trend so things will happen beyond trends you know the for example the black swan event uh, like the pandemic really taught us that you cannot do trending in many fields so i think you have to be very careful of trending many things will happen beyond trends so that's the second thing which i wanted to say third thing and some of the uh, trends which i am saying is not just from organizations point of view but also from people's point of view the young aspirants the students the future corporate professionals i am also trying to give some trends from their point of view so the third trend is that i think unlike 30 40 50 years ago in india this future is all about gig economy you know so i think people have to move away from the conventional job uh, kind of aspect so it's about gig it's about contractual work it's about work where people will add value and then maybe move on um, i mean i'm sorry to say maybe you know the future what we had our time 30 40 50 60 years ago lifetime employment uh, maybe that is a little thing not too many companies or people will have that you know so you have to be used you have to adapt to working in a gig in multiple organizational cultures this is very important for example me as a person in 30 years i have actually worked the first part of my career in very global companies like procter and gamble rekit benkiser uh, pepsi you know uh, hutch which is a, a hong kong based company now vodafone these are extreme multinationals i have also worked in uh, indian companies like a dabur you know like a um, uh, reliance retail which is a large indian conglomerate essentially of course it's very large and very multinational like i have worked in also private equity driven companies like a sterling which is driven by fairfax this is my fourth uh, startup which i am doing which is growth shift yeah and now again i am working in a company which is extremely global called brightcom you know it's a very global company most of the revenues are from across the world we just did a acquisition of a very large indian digital company in india so what i'm basically saying is that people have to get used to working in multiple organizational culture that is very important 
fourth point i want to say is that uh, hybrid workplaces and remote working might become very important in the long term or the medium term you know that has really this pandemic has shown us that so one of the output according to me of that if you really want to do well and adapt in this kind of situation is that all of us need to be self motivated this will not be a place where the senior or the boss will be sitting next to your cabin and telling you what is to be done it's all about self motivation you yourself have to see what is the input versus output some of these inputs which i am giving are largely maybe indian subcontinent but i think some of these are applicable across the world it's fairly global you know nothing much changes Fifth, of course, from an IT point of view, very important is uh, cyber security and security of data becomes very important. In fact, last week I hosted a, a webinar for our company Growth Shift, which is about data strategy. Uh, we in India know about data science, but there is one thing which is more important is data strategy. Okay, so lot of people don't know that first you must have a data strategy for your organization, then you can get into a data science and analytics. Huh? And this uh, in UK and European countries they are quite ahead. For most of the organization, there is a data strategy structure in place. So I think that becomes very important. And in that data strategy, cyber security becomes one of the things. Data security becomes one of the things. So that is another, you know, I think trend which will happen. And uh, some of the young people who are in this seminar, maybe, you know, this is one area which is has huge potential for growth. You know, that's one area people can focus on. And I think some of the professors and the faculty can also focus on that. Uh, next trend, according to me, is a simple one. I think these last two years we have all seen it, uh, which is essentially digital transformation of all companies, automation and digitization. Even small companies, very hyper local companies, uh, have to get into digital transformation. So, and uh, digitization. Let me give you an example. Some of you who are from Bombay know some of these local, uh, you know, uh, local delicacies like a cake company called birdies or you know a cake company called merwans you know these are very local hyper local uh, brands and businesses now they have always done their business offline even these companies need to get into digitization and digital transformation and they are getting a lot of their business now on e-commerce. I just gave these two examples because they are in some way our clients. You know, I, we have done some work for them and all that. So I'm just giving example that even the smallest companies or the hyper local companies have to get into digital transformation and digitization. So that's the next point. Um, next one, according to me, is for most businesses, you have to and I'm talking of consumer business B2B or B2C, you have to develop what is called an integrated offline online model, uh, very important in the future. So it will not be just online or just offline, especially in large companies like India, I mean countries like India, okay, where you have 1.4 billion people and it's a large, you know, uh, piece of land, okay, uh, across remote Offline, online, both will be there. So companies and people have to adapt to how do you do sales marketing in an offline, online uh, concept. For example, one of the things according to me, and this is very important for educational institutions, especially, you know, MBA, BBA courses and all to kind of see whether in the future it is required, is there is a different skill in remote selling. You know, most of the salespeople in India today were used to face-to-face -face selling, personal selling, you go and meet the client and all that. But today you have to develop the same thing through a remote and virtual medium. So can we get that skill? In fact, according to me, that is one skill which um, uh, a program which needs to be done for the future. You know, maybe by companies, maybe by startups, maybe by universities, the edge of remote selling. And if you actually see uh, already some of the businesses like today residential real estate selling or automobile selling, 
they are already into this where they are first process they are actually doing remote uh, virtual then they are trying to meet the customer or the client and uh, i think my previous company sterling holidays you know there also there is a lot of selling of uh, the membership business and the vacation ownership business i think they we have fine tuned that remote selling during this last two years because previously it was all meeting clients now it is me first virtual and then meeting clients so for sales marketing this multi channel uh, concept and how do you create conversation that is very important and one outcome of this which is very important for senior management and all the sales and marketing people to understand is that uh, typically in a direct face to face conversation you can build the trust much easier you know when you meet someone let's say i meet someone and you know the trust becomes easier to because you get to know the person the meta verbal cues how do you develop that trust also in a virtual concept very important you know so that is one outcome that we need to look at for the future in fact that is one reason why uh, the value of the brand becomes very important in future both brand of the company the brand you are selling and you as a brand the person who is selling you know the personal brand and therefore it is very important today for example anyone who meets me or wants to meet me in a business context uh i always know their name and i do a little bit of digital check on them their linkedin and then i meet them i'm talking of b2b meetings you know business meetings so uh today that is very important so if you are a in sales marketing it's very important for you to have a good reputed digital footprint you know so it's called you know online reputation management that's very important in the future um the next point according to me is and i think someone one of the speakers did speak about it which is the supply chain will become very important in the future uh because the way we do business and the advent of e-commerce so we have to build a resilient supply chain uh simple examples you know there are a lot of consumer products and services today which are sold by e-commerce digitally virtually so the outcome of that is that uh if i give a you know let's say a india example or a thailand example the company might be in bangkok but the consumer may actually call uh, asking the product from a chiang mai which is the northern part of uh, thailand or you know the northern hills of thailand in our context in india let's say the company may be in bombay but the person might actually order it from a assam or a urissa now in a physical world you can get away saying that we don't have distribution there but in a virtual world you have to ensure supply chain there otherwise you are not making the customer happy so supply chain also has a very big role in the future according to me resilient supply chain building a resilient supply chain uh, next point which is becoming very important is i think in many businesses uh, and i think uh, my, the gentleman before me from thailand he showed some of the innovative products i think you know which we saw uh, so what will become important is lot of products and services will be tech and chip driven you know and iot and uh, you know 5g this will become uh, very important today for example if you see in my my house in bombay around a year ago my son actually ordered what is called smart lamps so you can actually put off the lamps you know the simple things now 5 10 years ago it was supposed to be a big thing and we used to only use it in uh, in uh, in business you know hospitality in hotels we used to have smart lamps you know but today it is available and absolutely at a very 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 you know uh, affordable pricing so many of these things will happen where you know actually technology innovation will get into the product and service so that's the other one then uh, 
Of course, the big one which all of you know is e-commerce. You know, in India we know. I think the same case in Thailand. And what they are saying is that you know, within I think uh, next two years, 2024, worldwide e-commerce will be as big as 30, 40 percent of the total revenue, 35 percent, uh, which is fairly large. You know, um, of course the thing of e-commerce is that the customer side might be easier to build, which is the demand side. But the supply side also has to be built because for large countries like India, you know, unless you can give the supply of the product, it doesn't make sense. So that will take a bit of time. But to us, e-commerce is rampant with the usage of 5G, mobile phone, what Jio has done with affordable broadband. The other one very important is, I don't know whether some of you actually know the data i mean yesterday i was reading somewhere is very interesting piece of data that in terms of internet penetration urban internet penetration is around 70 percent and um any on the mobile or any form uh, in the rural it is around 50 percent i'm talking of urban india and rural india but do you know in farmers in rural it is as much as 70 percent if you take farmers as a uh, as a target so essentially what i'm trying to say is that actually you know people are using even you know we may think are why is farmers using but their mobile penetration and internet penetration is as much as 70 percent huh so uh, i think e-commerce clearly is a future not just for products but for services also and let me share with you a personal example of mine the fourth uh, startup which I have co-founded is called Growth Shift. Growth Shift is nothing but a startup which helps in mentoring young people, corporate professional, business professional. That's what we are focusing on. Yeah, it's called growthshift.com. Now, this mentoring actually I have been doing for last 15 years on a pro bono basis to a lot of my own people. In 2015, I actually made a plan that I will do this um, and can we do it on the internet huh? in 2015. Somehow I didn't take it forward because I was also very busy and actually I launched it in 2020. Okay, And today, the whole program is available only digitally and virtually. We don't have any physical program and people are lapping it up. What I mean is that in five years, people have also adapted to consuming services completely virtually and digitally. So the world is changing, you know. So today, the digital consumption of product and services, people are accepting. So that is another very big trend. The next trend, of course, is that we must utilize social media well. Uh, so from a marketing land standpoint, social media becomes important. You know, some of the penetration of YouTube and LinkedIn, a lot of people don't know that LinkedIn is actually around 85 million people in India and LinkedIn. That's a large population, you know, 85 million people. And uh, which means that for many products and services, LinkedIn itself is a big one. Now, I'm not promoting LinkedIn. I'm just giving you an example. Huh? Um, and I don't know whether some of you know that I think a, a month ago, LinkedIn has actually gone into Hindi. You know, and I think they'll follow with other languages. And in fact, my wife was telling me very interesting. So it is no longer that you will now hire people in your companies through LinkedIn. Even your drivers and plumbers now will be on LinkedIn. You know, which is a great transformation. You know, so this is another trend which will happen so in fact one of the trends which is very important i think we are a little bit missing it which is together with digital in india and video and social there is also what is called vernacularization uh, people like you and me are mostly maybe talking in english you know we are in the top 100 200 million people for us english is a communication language but there's a large population where actually vernacular is a medium and there's a huge growth of content happening there. One of the companies which have done very well on this is a company called Daily Hunt. They are basically a news aggregator 
and i have personally seen because i worked in chennai for 5 years so i traveled extensively in south i have actually seen people consuming news in their vernacular language uh, on some of these platforms so vernacularization is another big one and why it is so important because the size of the indian market is so large you know you have 100 million marathi speaking people in india 100 million you know you have uh, another 80 90 million tamil speaking people in india 100 million telugu speaking people in india 300 million bengali speaking 300 million because there are 200 million from bangladesh and 100 million from uh, west bengal 300 million and lot of people don't know that bengali is actually the fourth or fifth largest language in the world you know so that's the kind of size which we have so that is another thing in terms of what the future would be um big data is obviously very important according to me um so all these things imply that whatever business you are in you have to constantly adapt and think and innovate so suppose you are in the content business you know it is no longer providing content only in english and hindi content might have to be provided in all the languages you know so that's really innovation so innovation is not just about technology i think we sometimes forget that that you know innovation is about technology about language about how you deliver about the business model itself uh, so um, so to make a point let me tell you one of the things is that i was one of the people who moved into the mobile telecom industry in india long time ago in year 2000 okay we moved from fmcg to telecom and in india one of the big innovations which happened in telecom and later on i think it happened everywhere in the world which is essentially how do you package the telecom product like an fmcg and make it prepaid and very low value previously it was all what was called postpaid or a contract which means you have to take a bill and then you pay the bill you have, whatever is the money 1000 rupees you pay india is the first country where actually it got made into a small prepaid product so you pay 30 rupees or 100 rupees or 50 rupees by a certain amount of recharge and that becomes your product so it helps in affordability because people can buy only 10 20 30 rupees product also the company gets money up front which is very good so there is no cost of collection and the third one is because it is been made into a product consumer product you can do distribution and therefore today you see though telecom is just a 20 year old industry maybe or uh, it was launched in i think 19 uh, 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 i think 2000 year 2000 in india so it's a 20 year old product but in terms of penetration and density mobile telephony has gone beyond many of the traditional products like hair oil soap detergent which has been in existence for 100 years you know so that's really innovation that's the kind. so innovation is not just about technology that is another point which i want to make what is the kind of time i have uh, mr tarapur another 2 3 minutes so as much as you like the platform okay. is all yours okay no 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 i want to kind of stick to time not you know all, not at all sir it's a very informative session please Yeah. the time and the floor is all yours yeah no sometimes what happens is that i get over excited when i see nice good people and i keep on speaking okay so that is one of the things my family also tells me that you have to speak less listen more yeah <laughs> so yeah app love absolutely on to your words please feel privileged we are feeling privileged to be in your company and listen yeah. to you no, 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 no. i think i have another 5 7 minutes maybe yeah so so the next point which according to me is very important is uh, and this is largely i'm focusing on the younger people you know i'm really focusing on the young audience your college grads and the future grads and all of them and some of them maybe even young faculty you know not just young students huh? because that is very important sometimes we tend to forget the faculty they are as important in the education system as the student you know and they also need to be inspired and motivated yeah so uh, to the young faculty also according to me the future in india and many of the emerging markets is not conventional job it's all about entrepreneurship uh, 
So that is another trend which is very important in this adapt, innovate or perish. Each of you have to become entrepreneurs. Even when you are joining a large company or a small company or an organization, what the founder or the chairman or the CEO will look at you is always your entrepreneurial spirit. You know, what can you deliver? Can you think something new? Can you think something differently? That's what an entrepreneur is. Difference between entrepreneur and manager is the manager is thinking on a certain way. You know, whereas the entrepreneur has a little bit of vision beyond that. And of course, if you are a combination of an entrepreneur and manager, then that's the best thing which can happen. Because you will bring the dreams and vision of an entrepreneur, but you will also do the work structured way of working of a manager. And usually what I've seen is it's not very easy to get these two skills together. Usually these are two different kind of skills, but there are some people who are good in this. You know, some people I've seen who can do that. Okay, sometimes you... so. The future is all about entrepreneurship and in fact one of the things which we constantly keep on telling in our uh, platform called growth shift is that young people even if you're working somewhere you have a great job okay why don't you build something which is beyond your job which is your own think of something any building might just be a you can create a content platform you can write a book it may not be always about business you know it can be helping someone like i am associated with one ngo you know i'm doing that largely because i think they are doing some great work in the area of skilling and life skills yeah so you can keep on doing many things you know but entrepreneurship to me is very important then uh, of course if you look at it more from an area of you know marketing and advertising digital marketing will become very important you know that is really the future where a lot of companies will actually spend on uh, what is called you know digital advertising worldwide uh, so that is another very deep trend which is happening okay uh, they will continue to utilize social media in fact one of the trends which is there in india and china is that there is a whole new concept called kol key uh, uh, online uh, influencers huh? key opinion leaders these are basically influencers and these influencers doesn't need to be always the big celebrities the bollywood celebrities people who are you know will have a follower of 1000 or 2000 but who are very deep are also influencers so for example let's say dr pujari dr rakhi sharma they are all influencers in the and dr sangeeta you you are influencers in the field of education in the field of management education in india so one of the wrong concept is that influencer has to be always a celebrity the typical bollywood cricket type that's not true anymore it's really about expertise in your field yeah so that becomes very important why that is important because from a marketing point of view um, people have lost a little bit of credibility of general advertising people want credible communication you know that's what influencers can really bring on the table and this is happening in china also the concept of micro influencers that's what brands and products and services are using so i think the future is all about really uh, you know digital advertising will really grow huh? uh, and worldwide globally you know i think from a 300 billion it's supposed to go to 600 billion uh, one of the new trends there is that a lot of now consumption is happening of video so contextual video advertising becomes very important you know and it's about really ai ml getting into it so uh, the the platform can make out what is my interest and accordingly they will serve that uh, so these are really some of the trends um other one which i wanted to say i have missed out is of course i talked of digital process automation to some extent uh, in fact many of the sales processes the initial part will become automated you know it's called robotic process uh, so for example today if any of you are in the in the, in the real estate uh, thing if you're trying to buy real estate as a consumer typically you will call up someone will call you up they will come and say sir this is the thing this is the floor area this is the location this that so if you really look at it that whole process can be automated because there are standard set of 20 questions you will ask then actually the person can come in 
you know so lot of these things you know you standard questions would be where is it location when is it coming what are the details give me the legal details square feet show me some video who are the other people the typical questions so large part of the sales and marketing process will get automated there will be a big fallout of that also the fallout is that lot of sales people actually will become redundant and this is already happening in india in one industry which is called banking if you are a high end customer hni customer previously there used to be customer relationship people will be coming and explaining things to you now as a banking customer practically everything happens on your app or mobile or virtually you know and the role of that banking relationship person is actually quite less uh, so it's already happened and most industries it will happen uh, i of course don't know whether in education it will happen dr sangeeta and dr arun you can tell me a little bit on that <laughs> that's a so we are keeping our fingers crossed it should not <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No. So I I think in education there's a little difference. According to me, the difference is that the role of the teacher or the educationist is not just to give information but also to inspire. So that unfortunately cannot be done digitally. Okay. So let me give you an example of mine. When I was a kid in school, I studied in a very good school in Calcutta called Don Bosco School. uh i never really liked mathematics as a subject you know uh, you know i like science more and all that but not so much maths but in class 8 9 we had a teacher called dr uh, mr patros uh, he is uh, he is from kerala and of course he is there also he is retired but he is now in kerala mr patros uh, was the person who actually inspired us to do mathematics seriously you know because of his style and he's so he was a very short person but really inspirational you know he used to spend his 1 hour or 45 minutes class not a single minute he will waste he'll come and 11 12 he taught us calculus so the inspiration thing cannot happen digitally you know the information can happen digitally so some things in education i think will always remain non digital so that is another of my tips my thoughts yeah uh the next one is of course in terms of the usage of big data uh, big data will become bigger uh, companies will actually know everything uh, so today you know one of the companies which is doing it fairly well uh, is a company called netflix and to some extent amazon and some of these e-commerce companies they are doing it fairly well where they actually know what you have watched and before your brain can process what you need to watch they are actually recommending to you sometimes it is correct or incorrect but at least there is a recommendation you know same thing for some of the e-commerce fellows you know they are actually looking at your history and for me sometimes it is very helpful because they actually tell me that this is your last order would you like to give the same thing once again so for many of the grocery kind of repeat things it becomes very easy i just put that basket and that comes yeah so it is sometimes very helpful for the consumer and actually they are going through all your data so for me therefore big data data science and analytics is a big one so one of the things for the young people are that that is one area if they specialize in it's a huge future there you know at least next 50 years i can see that it is there no it will not go away okay then uh, uh, i think i have more or less ha uh, huh, the other one which is very important is i think uh, people have understood after this pandemic that health and medical care is very important and there will be a large number of startups which will happen in medical care um, i of course my second startup was called liven healthcare which is essentially a tertiary healthcare for dialysis and nephrology which we started for rural maharashtra uh, we did it for some time i invested lot of my personal uh, savings and investments unfortunately we could not take it forward you know because it's not a very easy field and it's not very nephrology and dialysis is not a very profitable field but lot of companies are doing well so again medical care is a field 
which you know some of your students and uh, people you can actually tell them this is really something of the future and there will be huge amount of innovations happening you know and uh, i mean one of the innovations is very simple today my son has gifted me a smart uh, this wearable smartwatch whatever you call it you know i was always a traditional one where i used to have the uh, so i think my last birthday he gifted me this hmm. okay now even then he's saying now you must upgrade because this is a android watch uh, apple has a watch where you have actually ecg built in okay so he is telling me upgrade to apple smart watch so there will be constantly innovation which will be happening you know and uh, consumers will like it and we need to be in india also there is constantly there is one uh, uh, one small startup in iit bombay uh, who actually you can get your uh, blood test done hemoglobin without pricking so what they are doing is and this can be used in remote areas rural areas quite well so the concept here is very simple they are actually taking the chromatographic color of your uh, red blood cell without pricking from the top and they are standardizing the color and telling you this is your hemoglobin so it's a very simple concept but they have done it well it may not be precise but at least it gives a initial recommendation for remote telemedicine you know where there is you know, this facility is not available so i think healthcare is another big one where lots will happen in india hmm. okay um i think uh, we will finish off my last two points which i wanted to make one is that the hr function will really change in the future that is one of the things of organizations now i am talking from organizations point of view and organizations which do not get into it i think will slowly become irrelevant i don't want to use the word perish because it's a very uh, hard word you know so i don't like that word but i will rather say will become irrelevant so adapt innovate or become irrelevant huh? so so the whole idea of hr is that traditionally hr was just known as a personal administration department their job is to get some people and do the you know letter and bureaucracy and all that but today hr is actually a business driving function they have to create the culture together with the ceo and the founder of is it a innovative or non innovative company can people speak openly are young people given importance is it a place for mentoring and reverse mentoring lot of things and a classic example of that if you see is a good thing has happened is lena has become ceo of one of the top global companies so this is good in two ways one is one of the few hr leaders becoming business leader okay of course because of her background and all that second one is of course she is also a woman huh? that is uh, you know secondary but you know so hr functions importance has become amplified by lena's uh, kind of uh, appointment as a global ceo of a very large company huh. lena by the way is one batch uh, i think my junior from xlri uh, i'm from iim calcutta and xlri and iim calcutta used to have basketball matches so we have played basketball together she is a very tall lady yeah i mean tall not in stature also but physically yeah so i mean this is another uh, great example of really hr become and whatever last one year she has been saying if you see the one two years is that hr as a function has to make a business impact hr is no longer a staff function it is actually a business driving function so to me that is very important that is one of the adaptations and changes which has to happen and the last point which i wanted to make is that uh, modern organizations both from organizations and people's point of view is all about mentorship yeah because you have to learn a lot in a short period that cannot happen necessarily the way i have learned by 30 years experience you have to actually quickly learn so one of the tips is for young people here who are what on this i don't know is if you really want to make a success in your life both business life and non business life it's very important to quickly get some good quality mentors 
Uh, so whoever you think as a mentor, I mean, ideally, very close people are not supposed to be mentors. Like, I can, I should not be the mentor of my son and daughter, you know, because then there are a lot of, uh, you know, like they say in surgery, you should never do surgery of your very close ones, you know. So uh, ideally, mentors are close, but not necessarily very, uh, you know, kind of uh, blood relations, something like that. So mentorship becomes very important because today the world is so vast changing uh, that you really need uh, inputs like we would like to know what is happening in Thailand. Thailand people will like to know what is happening in India. It's all a flat world today. You know, so mentorship of people and mentorship is not just about, you know, general coaching. It's about business tips. And my last plug, therefore, is that if any of your young people want to have mentorship, they can always, you know, search for growthshift.com. So that is my last plug. But I'm happy to take any questions. You know, whatever I have said is more from my quintessential experience of 30 years. Yeah, and I'm happy to have a debate or take any questions. Thank you, Dr. Sangeeta, Dr. Arun, uh, Ms. Tarapure, and all the other uh, people present here. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for such... Yeah, carry on, Delavine. Thank you so much, sir. What an insight. Um, Full and enlightening experience. I'm sure everyone agrees with me. Uh, I, I would yes. really like to have take a moment to have a round of applause for uh, yes. Mr. Peshwa Acharya.